Did you know that the foundation for Google, artificial intelligence, and even your cell phone's autocorrect was created by a man who had never seen a computer in his life? We're talking about 19th century Russia and a rebellious mathematician who used poetry to create one of the most powerful tools in modern statistics. Today, you'll learn the story of Andrei Andreevich Markov. We'll discover how he chained chance and changed the future of technology. Stay with me until the end, because this story connects Pushkin to ChatGPT. The Greatest Mathematicians of All Time Episode 29 Andrei Andreevich Markov Andrei Markov was born on June 14, 1856, in Ryazan, Russia, and died on July 20, 1922, in St. Petersburg. Andrei Andreevich Markov's mother was Nadezhda Petrovna, who was the daughter of a state worker, and his father was Andrei Grigoreevich Markov, the son of a country deacon. Andrei Grigoreevich Markov studied at a church seminary, then got a job as a clerk. The family moved to St. Petersburg, where Andrei Grigoreevich served in the forestry department and then became a manager of various households and estates. Andrei Grigoreevich married twice. With his first wife, Nadezhda, he had two sons and several daughters. Andrei Andreevich was the oldest of the two boys, while the younger was Vladimir. Although Vladimir died from tuberculosis at the age of 25, he had already gained an international reputation as a mathematician. In his early years, Markov was in poor health, and up to the age of 10 he could only walk with the assistance of crutches. His secondary schooling was at St. Petersburg Gymnasium No. 5, where he showed outstanding talents for mathematics, but performed rather poorly in other subjects. He wrote his first mathematics paper while at the gymnasium, but his results on integration of linear differential equations, which were presented in the paper, were not new. However, writing the paper did result in him meeting Korkin and Zolotarev, two of the leading professors at the university. It was clear that mathematics was the right subject for Markov to study at university, and in 1774 he entered the physics and mathematics faculty of St. Petersburg University. There he enrolled in the seminar run by Korkin and Zolotarev, but also attended lectures by Chebyshev, the head of the mathematics department. These were particularly stimulating to Markov, since Chebyshev often encouraged an atmosphere of research by posing new questions and problems for his students to investigate. Markov graduated in 1878, having won the gold medal for submitting the best essay for the prize topic set by the faculty in that year, on the integration of differential equations by means of continued fractions. He now wished to train to become a university professor and worked for his master's degree over the next two years. This was at a level equivalent to a doctorate. He was awarded the degree in 1880 for his thesis on the binary quadratic forms with positive determinant. This thesis was exceptional, as B. N. DeLone writes in The St. Petersburg School of Number Theory. This work, very highly esteemed by Chebyshev, represents one of the finest achievements of the St. Petersburg School of Number Theory, and perhaps even of all Russian mathematics. It is enough to recall the sorts of questions in the field of rational approximation, which at that time preoccupied the most prominent number theorists of France and Germany, to appreciate how much deeper into the field Markov had penetrated. 
it is therefore perhaps not surprising that although the dissertation was published immediately in French in mathematical annals, it did not become generally absorbed by West European mathematicians until from 1910 to 1920s the Berlin mathematicians Frobius and Reimach attempted to master the set of ideas contained in Markov's work. After submitting his master's thesis, Markov began to teach at St. Petersburg University as a privat docent while working for his doctorate, equivalent to the habilitation. He was awarded his doctorate in 1884 for his dissertation on certain applications of continued fractions. Markov had known Maria Ivanova Valvaitieva since they were children, for she was the daughter of the owner of the estate which his father was managing. Markov had tutored Maria Ivanova in mathematics, and later he proposed marriage to her. However, Maria Ivanova's mother would not allow her daughter to marry the son of her estate manager until Markov had gained sufficient social status. In 1883, Maria Ivanova's mother agreed to the marriage which took place in that year. Markov became an extraordinary professor at St. Petersburg University in 1886 and an ordinary professor in 1893. Chebyshev proposed Markov as an adjunct of the Russian Academy of Sciences in 1886, he was elected as an extraordinary member in 1890 and an ordinary academician in 1996. He formally retired in 1905 but continued to teach for most of his life. Markov's early work was mainly in number theory and analysis, algebraic continued fractions, limits of integrals, approximation theory and the convergence of series. After 1900, Markov applied the method of continued fractions, pioneered by his teacher Pafnuty Chebyshev, to probability theory. Markov was the most elegant spokesman for Chebyshev's ideas and directions of research in probability theory. Especially remarkable is his research relating to the theorem of Jacob Bernoulli, known as the law of large numbers, to two fundamental theorems of probability theory due to Chebyshev and to the method of least squares. He also studied sequences of mutually dependent variables, hoping to establish the limiting laws of probability in their most general form. He proved the central limit theorem under fairly general assumptions. Markov is particularly remembered for his study of Markov chains, sequences of random variables in which the future variable is determined by the present variable but is independent of the way in which the present state arose from its predecessors. This work founded a completely new branch of probability theory and launched the theory of stochastic processes. In 1923, Norbert Wiener became the first to treat rigorously a continuous Markov process. The foundation of a general theory was provided during the 1930s by Andrei Kolmogorov. Sergei Bernstein, who continued to develop the theory of Markov chains, wrote, Anne A. Markov's classic course on the computation of probabilities and his original memoirs, models of accuracy and clarity of exposition, contributed to a very large extent to the transformation of the theory of probability into one of the most perfected areas of mathematics and to the wide dissemination of Chebyshev's methods and directions of research. His profound analysis in the spirit of Chebyshev of the dependencies among observed random phenomena allowed Markov to extend probability theory in an essential way by the introduction and investigation of dependent random quantities. Markov was also interested in poetry and he made studies of poetic style. Perhaps surprisingly, Kolmogorov had similar interests. 
It is worth pointing out, however, that although Markov developed his theory of Markov chains as a purely mathematical work without considering physical applications, he did apply the ideas to chains of two states, namely vowels and consonants, in literary texts. His interest in poetry was not, therefore, an entirely separate interest from his mathematical work. As a lecturer, Markov demanded much of his students. His lectures were distinguished by an irreproachable strictness of argument, and he developed in his students that mathematical cast of mind that takes nothing for granted. He included in his courses many recent results of investigations, while often omitting traditional questions. The lectures were difficult, and only serious students could understand them. During his lectures, he did not bother about the order of equations on the blackboard, nor about his personal appearance. Markov lived through a period of great political activity in Russia, and, having firm opinions, he became heavily involved. Maxim Gorky, the Russian short story writer, novelist, and left-wing activist, was elected a member of the Russian Academy of Sciences in 1902, but his election was soon withdrawn for political reasons on the Tsar's orders. Markov protested strongly and refused to accept honors awarded him on the following year. In June 1907, Tsar Nicholas dissolved the Second Duma, which had been elected with majority on the left. Markov repudiated his membership and might have expected to suffer severe consequences, but the authorities chose not to make an example of an elderly and distinguished academician. In 1913, the Romanov dynasty, which had been in power in Russia since 1613, celebrated their 300 years of power. This was not likely to improve their already weak position. Markov showed his disapproval of the celebration by holding celebrations of his own. He celebrated 200 years of the law of large numbers. The Russian Revolution began early in 1917 as food supplies ran low. In September of that year, Markov requested the academy to send him to a disadvantaged town in the Russian interior. He was sent to Zaraisk, a small country town, where he taught mathematics in the secondary school without receiving any remuneration. He returned to St. Petersburg, but his health was now deteriorating and he had an eye operation. Although by 1921 he was in such a bad way that he hardly was able to stand, yet he continued to lecture on probability at the university. His death in July 1922 came after months of the most severe suffering. Markov had a son of the same name who was born on 9 September 1803 and followed his father in also becoming a renowned mathematician. In 1913, Andrei Markov wanted to prove a mathematical theory, the law of large numbers, applied to things that were not entirely random, but that were interdependent. To do this, he needed data. Since computers didn't exist, he needed something that had a long, structured sequence. He chose the classic verse novel Eugene Onegin by Alexander Pushkin. Markov sat down and manually analyzed the first 20,000 letters of the poem. He removed the punctuation and spaces, leaving only a long sequence of letters. Markov classified each of these 20,000 letters as either a vowel, V, or a consonant, C. He wanted to know does the chance of a vowel appearing change if the previous letter is a consonant? He discovered a statistical pattern. If the current letter was a vowel, it was very likely that the next one would be a consonant. If the current letter was a consonant, the chance of the next being a vowel increased. He proved that letters were not independent, like flipping a coin. The current state the letter you just read, probabilistically influenced the future state, the letter you will read next. This is a Markov chain, 
a system that transitions from one state to another based on probabilities. ChatGPT and other large language models, LLMs, are, at their most fundamental essence, machines for predicting the next word, just as Markov did with Pushkin's letters. The difference is the complexity. Markov, in 1913, looked at the previous one letter to predict the probability of the next being a vowel or consonant. Mobile phone spell checker in the 2000s uses Markov chains, n-brams, to look at one or two previous words and suggest the next. Example, if you type good, it suggests day. ChatGPT today, instead of looking only at the last letter or word, it uses an architecture called Transformer to look at thousands of previous words at the same time. But the ultimate goal is the same as Markov's, to calculate the statistical probability of the next word. It's impressive to think that, by analysing the letters in a Pushkin poem, Markov was unknowingly planting the seeds for the digital revolution. Without his chains, the modern world would be far less predictable and the internet a complete mess. Now, I want to know from you, did you already have any idea that artificial intelligence had such ancient roots, or did you discover that it was all a 21st century invention? Leave your opinion here in the comments. If you enjoy discovering the origin of the mathematics that governs our world, don't forget to leave your like. This helps the algorithm, which by the way uses Markov, to deliver this video to more people. And do not miss the next episode about the minds that shaped our history. Subscribe to the channel now. See you in the next video. Until then.